Chapter 2 Today was August 25th, the first day of school. Zane was waiting for Vatani to finish making breakfast. Come on, Vatani, is breakfast ready yet? The bus will be here in 20 minutes, exclaimed Zane. Zane, who usually took his bike to school, was a stickler for being on time. He hated waiting on his sister, who would often procrastinate when getting ready. Why, yes, master, your wish is my command, yelled Batani. Zane thought to himself, the female species is such an enigma. Vatani rushed out with two paper plates in her hands and placed one on the table for Zane. What is up with these pancakes? asked Zane. What's the problem? Vatani replied. There's still batter coming from them. They're buttermilk pancakes. Well, there's more milk than butter. And how come you have more bacon? One, I'm the one who cooked. And two, I'm the oldest, so I get more. The twins' mother walked into the kitchen preparing to leave for work. Now, Zane, your sister went through all this trouble to make breakfast. The least you can do is give it a chance. Daddy, if you're listening, I could use some help here, said Zane. Zane stared at his sister intensely. Trust me, V, bacon is the last thing you need. Vitani frowned at Zane. I know you didn't just call me fat. While you're worried about my size, you need to eat for someone so small. Oh, ha ha, real funny, said Zane. Hush, both of you, said Mom. I gotta go to work. Don't miss the bus, okay? Yes, ma'am, said the twins. Then both of them heard the bus coming and hurried out the door. See ya, Mom, both of them exclaimed. Bye, have a good first day. Zane and Vatani got on the bus and headed off to school. Vatani was greeted by her best friend, Ruby, who was Native American. Hey, Vatani, are you ready for seventh grade? Asked Ruby. Definitely. I love my brother, but a whole summer with him is like getting gum out of your hair. I cooked breakfast this morning, and all he did was make fun of it, replied Batani. Ooh, well, at least you don't have to deal with him at school too much. That's the truth. We're officially out of the newbie stage of middle school, so let's make the best of it. I hear you, girl, said Ruby. The school bus arrived at Franklin Roosevelt Middle School, and before the kids entered the school, Batani approached Zane. Hey, bro, I got something to tell you, yelled Batani. Zane turned, and Vitani gave him a big slap. Ow! What was that for? He yelled. That's for calling me fat, she replied. Vitani walked off with great satisfaction, with her irritated twin secretly lucky no one else saw the slap. Vitani and Ruby walked into their homeroom class that had three-person seating arranged by her new teacher, Mr. Simmons, who hadn't shown up yet. The two covered their spot with only one seat available. Hey, we have homeroom together. Sweet, said Votani. Well, we're already off to an awesome start, Ruby replied. Soon a relatively tall Asian girl who was listening to music on her headphones walked in and approached two other girls at one of the tables. Konnichiwa, I'm Kimiko. Mind if I sit here? She asked. The two girls glanced at each other confusingly and the brunette spoke. Konichiwa? This is America. We speak English here, girl. Besides, we're saving that sea for a friend, and we don't need a giant taking up all of our space. That's not even the worst part, Rachel. Her hair and fashion sense need some serious work, said Brianna. Kimiko looked down and blinked her eyes to keep tears from coming out as the two girls laughed in her face. I know you're not talking of all that nasty weaving your hair, Brianna, yelled Vatani. They're lame anyway, V. If they had better jokes, then maybe everyone would laugh, said Ruby. Oh, yelled everyone in class. Rachel and Brianna shamefully sat in silence as the class mocked them. How about you mind your own business, Pocahontas, said Brianna. Chemical, right? You're good to sit with us, said Batani. Kimiko's face lit up with happiness. Thanks. Rachel frowned at the three girls. Maybe now she can teach you how to use chopsticks and wear ugly kamanas, mocked Rachel. Kimiko turned around and glared at Rachel. 
It's called a kimono, and you better watch your mouth about my coach, you freaking retard, yelled Kimiko. Rachel rose from her seat and spat in Kimiko's face. Ah, gross, she screamed in disgust. Now who's the retard, Rachel yelled. Ooh, you got her good, shrieked Rihanna, laughing. The whole class watched in shock, and Ruby gave some sanitizing wipes to Kimiko to clean the spit off her face. Matani walked up to Rachel. That's not cool, Rachel. You need to see your sorry. Rachel grabbed Matani's face and shoved her away. Shut up, she yelled. Matani's face filled with rage as she gave a strong push to Rachel that caused the brunette to crash into the desk. Don't you ever push me! Before Rachel could react, the class heard footsteps in the hallway and the disgruntled girl scrambled to their seats to avoid suspicion. Matani and Ruby comforted their new friend. Are you okay, Kimiko? asked Ruby. Yeah. That girl's going to pay for spitting in my face and calling me a giant, Kimiko replied. Don't worry about Rachel. Her ponytail is pulled too tight. Her and Brianna are just a bunch of skanks who don't know anything. But we got your back, said Batani. Kimiko smiled with gratitude as Mr. Simmons walked into the class and greeted everyone. While Rachel coldly stared a hole in Batani's head. Are you really going to let her get away with pushing you into the desk, Rachel? Brianna asked. Are you kidding? No one embarrasses me like that, Bree. I'm going to make Vatani's life miserable. <laughs>